Welcome to this video lecture. We're going to continue talking about real-time optimization and specifically how do you update a model in Python and SciPy so that you can account for changing conditions, whether the plant changes or the environment changes or the market changes. How do you do that in real time, bringing in those new changes, solving for optimal conditions based on a changing environment, um, and then using that optimal solution to help your plant stay um, optimal. Okay, so just as a review uh, of real-time optimization, you take the plant, you read in sensor data, you feed in that sensor data into a model fitting routine so you can continuously be updating your model based on uh, changes in the plant. So if something changes in the behavior of the plant, you can incorporate those latest changes into your model. You then take that updated model, feed it into your optimization application, you would also want to combine this with changing conditions of like external conditions. So these could be changing weather, or changing environmental conditions, or a changing market. Like if your feedstock and product prices change, you can pull those in from an external source, factor that into your optimization, and then send these new optimal solution to uh, the actuators of your plant. So we're going to show you how to do this. We're going to go back to our original model uh, using unconstrained optimization as an example. So if we we're trying to minimize this function, we no longer have specific numbers here. Now we have these parameters, this a, b, c, and d as the coefficients of our model. Uh, we, I want to show you how you can update these parameters so that your objective function automatically changes. You can do this with your constraint functions as well, but we're just going to use uh, the objective function as an example. So I'm going to go to our this Jupyter notebook. Here it's a lot of this is the same. Um, we import from scipy.optimize, we import this function called minimize. We define our objective function. Notice now that our objective function has two inputs. It has our x and it has this uh, star args, or these are the arguments that go into our model. So basically what we're telling our objective function is that x, this x vector, these are the decisions var variables. These are the things the optimizer has control over and it can iterate on these. These arguments, these are external information. Maybe this is um, factoring new information about the plant just in terms of the way it operates or or bringing in new prices or new market conditions or weather. Um, these are something that the optimizer would have no power to change but it can factor in external changes in these arguments and optimize accordingly. So we we are just telling our optimizer hey this variable x0 is just the uh, first element of my x vector. x1 is the second element or the uh, Python gets a little confusing. <laughs> um, so then we tell it, okay, A, B, C, and D, these are arguments that are going to be fed into our optimization externally. So now prior to, uh, to this we had these numerical values for uh, showing up as our coefficients, but those could change. Uh, maybe those are changing costs of commodity prices or Maybe these are changing fitting parameters because something has changed in the performance of our plant. So we can calculate our objective function based on both the decision variables in our x vector and also these changing arguments like a, b, c, and d. We still define the bounds and the initial guess just as we did uh, before. Um, we actually will not have constraints in this problem, so we actually don't need this line. But here we have some lines of code where we can actually update um, those, co those coefficients or those arguments. So we're just picking some numbers here. So as we change these numbers, note that our model will actually change, our objective function will change. So we want to be able to find the optimal solution no matter what the values of these are. So we still have sort of our master command here where we're solving the optimization problem. Uh, based on the objective function we've given it, it starts with our initial guess. We add in this other little section here where we're just saying, okay, grab these arguments that would have been defined previously and use those to populate the objective function or the constraints function, depending on where we're working these arguments into our system. We're still going to use the same method and we're still going to use those same bounds. So let's solve the optimization problem here. Um, so we haven't actually visualized the optimization yet. Under these particular set of circumstances, our objective function value is minus 9.8. 
and our optimal x0 value is 0 0.6, our optimal x1 value is 2. So I've taken the liberty to just code this up. We're defining this cost function that's still just based on these coefficients, so we can plot and I can show you how this changes. Um, so we're going to do all the plotting of both the objective function and our optimal solution here. So let's go ahead and run that. So notice that this looks quite a bit different than the objective function previously, um, where now our optimal solution is over here um, at, again, this point of 0 0.6 by 2. So let's try this again. Let's go um, just see what happens when we go and change these values. So let's, I don't know, let's do 10. And let's do b equals 3, c equals 9. These are kind of just arbitrary. Let's do something crazy like d equals 20. So let's go ahead and run, solve for optimality. Um, we are now seeing optimum at 0.15 and 1.11. Let's plot that and just see how our objective function changes. OK, so our objective function looks, again, different. And we're still finding um, the optimal solution here. So we'll do this just one more time. So you can see this is sort of how real-time optimization works, except we're dealing with sort of this fictitious uh, hypothetical example. Um, but you can use this same concept. So when your model changes, or when your market changes, or when the environment changes, you can factor in these changing externalities into your model and optimize accordingly. So even though things are continuously changing, your code can still work as long as you have a mechanism for updating your model based on these changes. So let's do c equals 0. I don't know. We're getting a little crazy here. So let's just see how this changes. Um, we got a new optimal solution here. Now we're at this bound on x1. Um, and we're very near the lower bound on uh, x0. So let's just see how that looks. OK, so it looks very different now. So you can see our gradient is pointing us to here. So we, we have hit this uh, upper bound on x1, and we're very near the lower bound on x0. So we just wanted to show you this is how real-time optimization works, basically, is that as conditions change, you incorporate those new conditions into your model and into the optimization, solve under those new conditions, and then feed that information back into the plant, and hopefully you have a reasonably accurate model so that you'll achieve something close to true optimality in your plant.